We're going to try the shoe up to the foot. I might as well go to it. Now if I put the shoe on as in upside down, I can try it close to the foot. Before deforming the shoe, it won't fit onto the foot because it's close to the size, the same diameter. The rim will deform and then wrap onto the hoof. This foot is yet to be trimmed, but this is the, the, the size for the foot. The width and the length are adequate. You can marginally reduce the, the width of this shoe if, if need be after fitting it. Um, they're quarter inch sizing, uh, incremental sizing, so they're very close. If one doesn't fit, another one can be, uh, the next size can be used. If you need a little bit more length on the heel of the shoe, the imprint granules can be added on, welded on to the heels, so you can create a little bit more oval shoe. If you have a very oval foot, it's not, not a terrible thing to do to, um, rather, uh, to use a hind shape on a front foot, if it's a very oval um, foot. Right, we're going to trim the foot. It's just as normal foot trimming, but the detail in the cleanliness is more important. Any oxidised uh, areas or undermined need cleaning out back to sound horn. Trapping anything like that in underneath the imprint shoe or any glue on shoe just is an incubating bed for, for bacteria to thrive in. So we trim the foot, clean it and, uh, and then fit the shoe. Once the foot's trimmed, then they'll use surgical spirit to kill bacteria on the sole and around the white line. I've got a, a Dremel here, it's a high-speed motor cutter with a, a four millimetre round burr, burr high-speed burr, to cut the indentations which key the shoe uh, into the hoof. We use specs to protect our eyes and uh, this, there's, a, there's a defect in the heel so um, uh, we'll work around that defect and any other irregularities in the hoof I will use the Dremel also to clean out. This area here, there's been a, a fault that this is growing out, so I'm going to excavate that back and then uh, refill it right from its base so there's no, no undermining. So on this side of the foot, I've got one notch, two notch, and because of the, the undulations, I'm actually going to use that as my keying point on this side of the foot. The other side of the foot will be more conventional. Right, fella. I'm also going to put a little key point just around here somewhere. Come on. It's 
Let's have a look at your foot. We use surgical spirit to clean or rather just kill bacteria around the white line and in the clefts around beside the frog. So a good squirt of that over there. The rest of the hoof has been rasped from heel to heel. I'm pouring on the boiling water. The shoe is on the shoe support accessory which elevates it in the container. And I'm just filling the water to a level which only submerges the rim of the shoe, not the ground bearing surface. We don't want to soften that, we don't want to create this uh, a softness here so the shoe is more likely to sink in onto the, onto the sole. And the imprint structural adhesive is going to be applied from the buttress of the heel around to the other buttress to the height of the rim of the shoe. I've taken the shoe out of the water with a wet finger I run my hand just around the room to open it a little got the softened shoe here or the, with a softened rim offer it up onto the hoof Sit it back so as I can just see the toe and then mould onto the hoof, blend it to the heels. Do not press the shoe down so as there is no clearance on the, from under the sole. Those indentations need the plastic forcing into them. And when we are happy we've got the shoe central underneath the bone column and not following any distortion of the hoof capsule. It's back to the bulbs of the heels, it's set under just under the toe, balanced and true, we cool it. And it's not pressing hard onto the sole. Good boy, Let's stand. You notice I'm not taking this horse's foot between my legs. If the horse ju jumps about, I've got more chance of staying with him whilst doing this. Good boy. When we're happy that the shoe is cool and white in appearance on the upper layer here, firm, we let him wait there. And then we run a bead of adhesive around the top edge to ensure we've got a seal. And then run a finger. Smooth that out. He needs to stand now for 10 minutes before he does anything really active and that should be integral with his hoof. The container sitting on the lid which is insulating it from the taking the heat out on the ground. That is already now soft. I'll use some of this structural adhesive. You can either use stru the structural adhesive on the plastic or hot air 
to weld plastic to plastic, but wherever there's horn involved, you need adhesive between the two. So to fill up the gap here, give it a bit more strength in that heel quarter, I'm, I'll use this plastic. So I fish this stuff together in here. Here we've got the imprint granules, make it into a little bit of a roll. I only need about two thirds of that. It's like Play-Doh or chewing gum. I'm gonna sit that on where I had the adhesive. And then the excess I pull off and just make sure there is adhesive wherever you bond. Or hot air, if it's welding to plastic, it, it'll weld to itself. So this buttresses this quarter, heel quarter. And there should be no need to cool that because the horse is weight bearing, it will cool of its own accord uh, with the adhesive and harden up. Uh, so long as it's not knocked, it doesn't get knocked, that should be okay. We can do any final touching up with the rasp after it's hardened, but um, we've uh, created a bit more strength there and less likely to overreach and tread off this, this where we've given a bit of lateral extension.